All right, well, Stuart, welcome in the booth here with me. I appreciate you helping me out tonight. Um, you, you've you ran around Pocono before, haven't you? I mean, maybe not in iRacing, but have you ran it around it in other, in other games? I have. Uh, I've run it a little bit in uh, NR2003. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing about Pocono is, as you can see by watching the real races on TV, is it's... It's one of those places where it's hard to pass, and the only way you're really going to get by someone is if they make a mistake. But it's also a very easy place to make a mistake. Uh -huh. You know, as it's uh, it's so different from all the other tracks. You know, you got to shift a lot. It almost drives similar to Martin. Well, similar to a road course in a way. Yeah. It. Um, I know it's kind of slick here in i racing. Uh, three different distinctive turns and uh, you know turn one being you really got to slow down in turn one and uh, turn two is eh, you can kind of lazily go through that just kind of lift and, and let it roll through and turn three is slick slippery whatever you want to call it. it's like driving very little grade. banking too. yeah Actually, I think turn three is almost flat. You might have maybe five degrees of banking or something like that. I don't know. It looks more banked than it really is. I'll tell you. When you're out on the track, it feels like it's just flat. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. And, uh, it seems to be the one uh, most of the wrecks and stuff are coming out of turn three. Yeah, I mean, in, in the trucks, actually, the trucks are a little bit more stable than the, the Gen 6 that you usually see running here. Mm -hmm. the, we might even see some bump drafting tonight going down the back stretch. Oh, yeah, and definitely, and down the front stretch. Front stretch is definitely oh, notorious yeah. for a lot of bump drafting. Uh, we had a practice race last night. Went, uh, eh, it was a little rough. We had a couple green flag runs, but uh, 35 laps, we had two cautions. And I think a lot of the guys weren't really too happy with that. But uh, all in all, I thought it was a pretty good chance to get out there and, and race. Um, I of course choked with about five to go, and, and uh, or ten, about ten to go, I guess it was. And I uh, come out of turn one, slipped up, hit the wall, and bounced down to the inside, and just stuck right in the inside wall. So I had to tow until I finished one lap down. No, and it didn't bring out a caution. That, that's good, I guess, for the rest of the field. Yeah. Not, not so good for you. Yeah. But I finished eight. I think there was like 12 or 13 of us in there, and I finished like eight. Not a, not a bad run. You know, just because the practice race, you know, the practice race, it didn't go too bad. It, it didn't go, you know, great, but it didn't go bad. I mean, New Hampshire, we certainly had a bit of a interesting practice race to say the least and the actual race was pretty exciting if you ask me yeah but uh yeah the guys uh, seem to be uh you know doing quite well out here turning some really good laps uh you know down into the the 58s and wow man that, i'm just waiting for tony to pop in here any minute and pull a 57 <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching Sean go around the track right now, and you can see him coming out of a. I think it was turn one. He brings it inches to the wall, and that that is how you're fast around here. You got to use all you can get. Yep. That in uh, in turn three, that black stripe that's right in the middle where Sean's going right now is uh, very important right there. There's a lot more grip on that as he loses it coming off of turn three. But that black stripe is very important here. There's a lot more grip on that black stripe. All right, just a little under seven minutes here till we, we get to qualifying. Um, what are you expecting here tonight, Stuart? Uh, you, you know how you how you think these guys are going to do on this track? They got 65 laps. Going to be a long race. Well, I know everyone here, uh, you know, is, is patient. I think towards the end there there could be a wreck if people are trying to get to the field. Maybe if someone stays out on two tires or old tires. Other than that, though, I think everyone you know should should uh, have a nice clean race out there tonight. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I just, uh, I, I really would not take two tires, and certainly not no tires at a track like this. 
Yeah, and last night we seen a couple guys try it. Uh, there was a caution, I forget how many laps to go, but there was a caution and a couple of the guys stayed out and uh, on the old tires and they didn't do real well. Uh, Vic stayed out and he didn't do too bad, but uh, I don't see him in here tonight. That's kind of unusual. Unless he may pop Indeed. in but at the last minute. But I'm kind of expecting a little. Uh, I agree with what you know, what your expectations are, but uh, I think the field is going to get spread out enough. Uh, we seen this last night. The guys really seem to get spread out quite a bit, and, uh, and they just race the track. Oh, it, yeah. And you know they just race the track and got the laps run down and. Uh, you know, ho hopefully they'll do that here tonight. You know, just run some green flag laps out and and try to get uh, and make it from there. You know, see how they how they can uh, run them when they get down to the five to go or ten to go, and you know, put the hammer down and try to reel the leaders back in or whatever. But boy, I'll tell you what, they had about a 14 second. Who was it? Uh, Kyle Putts had a, like a 14 second lead over uh, the rest of the field now. It was kind of weird. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was Sean Butler. Him and Sean Butler battled for the lead for, after that last restart for quite a while. And uh, and I don't know if Sean slipped up or what. I don't know. I mean, I was racing, so I couldn't, couldn't go back and look at it. But <clears throat> whether he slipped or what, and uh, Kyle wound up pulling away by 14 seconds. So, you know, wow. I think uh, definitely pit strategy could come into play here. I mean, it's quite possible to see a lot of green flag pit stops. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, you were just talking about uh, Kyle Putz. I don't actually see him in here. Actually, yeah, that's kind of odd. Hmm. But I accidentally joined the server. <laughs> I've been trying not to do that, so I'll have to make sure I take my points out of the the points. Yeah, I was about to say, nice lap, pretty. Because <laughs> <laughs> it'll give me last place points if I don't, you know. Heck, Ed, it was doing that to Ed and I, and, and uh, when we got to look, and heck, we were like like in 12th and 13th in the points, and we never turned a lap, you know? It's like, right. whoa. <laughs> and we had quite a few guys that, you know, were coming up through, and that was two more positions that gained, and everybody gained it behind us. So I just took their points out, and our points, I mean. Down uh, about almost two and a half seconds here till qualifying. Fixed at points thing. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm. Hold on, I'll be right back. Channel switch. What points things that, Jeremy? What, what? The thing on Dan Lisa, Rudy. Remember, we went and changed it last week so that it, even if you join the server, oh, yeah, if you don't right. run any laps, it won't fix it. Oh, okay. Well, you mean you're listening to the broadcast? Are you listening to the broadcast? Yeah, I always listen to it while I'm oh, practicing. Okay, cool. <laughs> I forgot all about that. Hey, I'm hey. old. <laughs> Got me some You're not just Sorry. Yeah, that was a little late on that one. Uh, yeah. You're right. not old, Rudy. You're old as dirt. Yeah, I know. It. Well, at least I got an autographed copy of the Bible. You guys don't have that. Na -na 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 -na. Yeah. All right, good luck, guys.
Okay. Yeah, I, I forgot he he fixed that on Dan Lisa, so uh, that even if we do join the server, it doesn't add up our points. I forgot all about that. <laughs> awesome stuff. Yeah. So that's good. <laughs> I told him I said, "Man, I'm old. Cut me some slack." <laughs> I forgot. Ain't like I ain't had about 50 million other things on my mind the last few days. <laughs> I didn't know he was listening to the broadcast. But that's cool. Yeah, I don't know why I forgot about that. Dang. Yeah, I was saying while you were gone, there, you know, the lap times for the top four are relatively close. And uh, from, the, from there on, or the top five even. Uh -huh. are all about within one-tenth of a second, but from there on out, things really start to uh, to uh, separate. So it's a lot of it's going to be saving your tires. I think the top four will probably stay close together, depending on how tire wear goes. Yeah. And then we may have some, some stragglers around the back. But it uh, looks like we're just about to get started with qualifying here. All right. Pop up the qualifying here as they're getting ready to qualify, and we'll see ev where everybody qualifies at. And uh, we've worked out some things here. Jeremy and I have worked out some pretty good stuff with IRTBO, and uh, got a lot of really cool things that hey, we uh, figured out. <clears throat> so uh, uh, I can't remember I think it's a two and a half miles around this track isn't it uh, let me check on that for you real quick Rudy it's somewhere around there I'm sure okay uh, well you you have the points pulled up let's talk a little bit about the points as uh, these guys are qualifying here um Right, uh, up top would would be Sean Butler, then you got Dustin Lee, only five points back, and then Jeremy uh, is, or Jeremy Patterson is 11 points back, along with Tony Godwin, who we know is fast, uh, who's, who's uh, 20 points behind, and that's honestly just because I don't think he started every race, is that is that accurate? Uh, well, it should probably say somewhere, well, it probably don't on the website there, it doesn't show how many starts he's had. But if you click on the at the top of the points there on the website, it it'll take you to the Dan Lisa. And, gotcha. <clears throat> and you can look at it there. I mean, if you want. But uh, yeah, I think he's missed a couple races, and it looks like he's going to miss a race tonight too. Yeah, I mean, he's got he's got five wins. He's certainly a, a force to be reckoned with, and he he would be leading the points if he were able to start every race. But mm -hmm. you know, that's that's how things go sometimes. Yeah. Well, real life situations, you know, this is the the thing that I've been already discussing today. You know, real life situations uh, come into play, and there are things that we can't things we can't control. You know, and uh, those got to come first. This is just a game. You know, oh yeah, it's just a sim, and we're all in here having fun together, and and so real life situations got to got to take over. Oh, look at of that. course, Sean Butler turned a fifty seven seven. Wow, where did oh he turned on his hacks? <laughs> <laughs> I was teasing him last night about that. Riphacks.exe. Shut them hacks off. Yeah. <laughs> Man, good lap. Fifty seven seven. Wow. I mean Jeremy there Jeremy's a half a second slower. That's a lot. Oh yeah, I mean this could be a great, great night for for Sean to you know bring up his points lead even more. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we've got nine qualifiers so far. 
Uh, William Kirk in the third spot. Uh, Christopher Perryman fourth. Vic Greenwood fifth. Robert Craze sixth. Timothy Lewis seventh. Aaron Davis eighth. Matthew Breckel ninth. The last of the qualifiers. Yeah, as, as you know, and the, the thing that I was talking about, these guys getting spread out, it's just going to make it a long, boring race for these guys. You know, 65 laps out there, and you're way out ahead of the pack. It's just going to be a long, boring race, you know. Yeah, I'm a little bit scared, Rudy. We're gonna we're gonna have to try to find a way to make it entertaining for the viewers, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it, it's it, it might be boring uh, for a little bit, but I'm sure there's always going to be battles somewhere on the track, and mm -hmm. there's certainly going to be some pit strategy. Yes. All right, we've got ten qualifiers now. And Jeremy closed up the gap a little bit, but still not quite enough. Or, I'm sorry, Dustin Lee, I take that back, closed up that gap. But not enough to take the pole. All right, so there's the qualifying order. Let's see what we got here. Make sure this is on. I want to do a rundown here on everybody so Sean Butler on the pole Alright, Sean Butler on the pole with a 57.734 as everybody's now starting to take the grid. Um, Alright, second place, uh, Dustin Lee. Sorry about that. See, this thing ain't quite right here. I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like it. How come it worked? Okay, anyhow, we're gonna, we're gonna do this another way. Okay. Oh, see, I didn't. I want it on. It's not right. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Sean Butler on the pole. Dustin. See, and it goes back to the other camera. Why does it go back to the other camera? It's, I don't have it on that camera. Wow, <laughs> this thing messed up. Anyhow, Dustin Lee starting second. Jeremy Patterson in the third spot. William Kirk fourth. Uh, Christopher Perryman starting in the fifth position. Vic Greenwood sixth. Robert Cray seventh. Timothy Lewis eighth. Aaron Davis ninth. Kevin O'Brien tenth. Matthew Breckel eleventh. Thomas Brand Brandener. Brandner, I guess it is, in uh, 12th spot, Michael Norris, 13th, Brian Wortman, 14th, Steve Hurst, 15th, and Chuck Scallo taking round and out the tail end of the field as the leaders are starting to roll off now. Yeah, Thomas Brand, he's he, Thomas Brandner, as you said, uh, he, I'm, he's pretty new here, but uh, I was racing with him at Charlotte. He's a wonderful driver, and he was quick. He actually uh, took the win at the Nationwide Series here at Max Speed TV. Uh, in its debut, actually, at Charlotte, and it it was a dominating performance. I was able to stick with him for a little bit, but he just he did a better job on the pit stops. And definitely. Yeah, Br Brandoner is definitely going to be a force. Uh, I don't mean to use this term too much, but a force to reckon with. Oh yeah. Uh, here at Max Speed TV. Yeah, he uh, was the first one that did not qualify, starting in the twelfth position. Uh, so hopefully we'll get up there and help. Angle with the leaders. And he's starting back in the 12th spot in the number 24. DuPont Chevy Silverado. 
He likes that 24, don't he? Who doesn't? <laughs> Me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody gearing down and ready to rock and roll. If they go into turn three, when they come out of turn three, they're gonna be hammered down, ready to roll. Pace car ducks off. Green, green, green. Here we go. 65 laps at Pocono. Gonna be a long race. Sean pulling out to a little bit of a lead. Dustin on the outside. Now ducks in behind Sean. And they stay high and diving into turn one. Dustin takes it a little bit too low and has to fall, has to drift up high coming out of one. Oh, we got a couple of them tangled up here. I don't know. Caution is out. So let's go back and uh, take a look at this. catches the apron a little bit and comes up the hill into Vic Greenwood and those two tangle in turn one. And it, it certainly looks like Vic Greenwood got the worst of that one. Barrel rolling uh, down the one of the back straightaways here at Pocono getting hit yeah. by several other trucks. So all right well first caution out on lap one. Well, the good news is, is most of these guys, well, these, well, it's lap one, so everyone has a reset that was involved. They can get back out there and have another go at it, I suppose. Yes, sir. acting right to me. <laughs> Alright, so Sean Butler's still on uh, the point here. Dustin Lee in second. Now, Vic Greenwood and Christopher Perryman both uh, stopped in the pits. Looks like Vic might have, he was only in there for about 1.5 seconds, so he may have just topped off his fuel. I'm not really sure. Uh, Christopher Perryman's still in pit road. Uh, I'm not sure Christopher must have had a lot of damage on that. Vic Green is back out, catching up to the tail end of the field. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why Christopher would be in, in pit road, because you get the reset, and uh, it couldn't possibly take that long to take uh, four tires and reset the car, but who knows? Something could be going on down there that we don't know about. Jeremy Patterson on pit road now. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't Jeremy Patterson. I apologize. Uh, hmm, I don't know who the heck that was. Doggone it. Looks like Jeremy might have some, some damage on the nose there. Might be waiting to use the reset for later. Oh, maybe not. Oh, Chuck Scala. Okay, Chuck Scala was on, he was on pit road. Must have, he didn't have no damage or nothing that I've seen, but I think he might have just stopped, topped off his fuel and he'd back out. 
Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> sorry about that. Um, it, it's you know that Dustin certainly knows how important it is that he has a good run here tonight. You saw how much he dove it in there into one, trying to get by Sean, because he knows how tight this points battle is. You know, five points between first and second place, and you got Jeremy Patterson in there, um, eleven points back. So it's it's certainly a very close points battle. This doesn't bode well for Jeremy Patterson, but you know he can get his truck reset and still get back up there. Mm -hmm. And obviously he didn't take too much damage on that, so that's a good thing. You know he he stayed out, and uh, uh, he may have lost a couple of positions, but nothing really really drastic. Uh, let's see here, he started in third, and he's now in eighth. So yeah, he did lose a few positions, but. He had lost a few before the wreck. I think he was back like the fifth or something, fourth or fifth before the wreck. So, so Matthew Breckel in sixth. Timothy Lewis in fifth. Robert Craze fourth. Uh, William Kirk third. Dustin Lee still in second. And our leader, Sean Butler. Hopefully they'll get this sorted out and they'll get back out there and, uh, and you know get get some green flag laps on this and get spread out a little bit and I think it's going to wind up to be a decent race once they do. Yeah, I mean it's a very treacherous turn one here and once you can kind of get things spread out, you can kind of plan your passes a little bit. Whereas turn one, you know, I'd say turn one at Pocono is even more dangerous than turn one at Martinsville even. Oh yeah, turn one is bad here. <laughs> It's bad, you know, especially like on a start like that, you know, that everybody's all bunched up together and wow, it's, you know, everybody wants to get a couple of positions. Right, I mean, that's the easiest place to get them around here because as we've said uh, in the pre-race, it's, it's not a very easy place to pass. Just the, the track in general, it's very hard to pass here. Yep, you're right. So, uh, Vic Greenwood now, I'm showing him in the 15th spot. Uh, and he started in 6th, and he's now back to 15th. But, you know, he'll, he'll get back up there. Vic's one of them ones that uh, he likes to kind of save his stuff for the end of the race, and uh, he's good at it. Yeah, none of us are really hoping for a caution, but uh, I think Christopher Perryman might, because he's currently being scored as the first truck, or the only truck actually, one lap down. Right. Yep. Uh, I'm showing him two laps down again. Yeah, two laps down. He's, uh... No, he is one lap down. Okay. Hmm. I guess he needed to cross the line to make it the one lap down. Okay. Alright, so everybody doubling back up. Lights are off on the pace car and getting ready to go back to green flag racing. a long straightaway down that from turn one to turn two is a long straightaway not as long as the front stretch but it's pretty long yes yeah, certainly and that run you're gonna get up if you take turn one correctly it's gonna make that long straightaway a perfect place to make a pass yeah I noticed that yesterday in our practice race that uh, that's where I was uh, Timothy was getting me there or no I'm sorry he was getting me in turn two I could get him in one and three, but he'd get me in turn two. He'd go by me in turn two, and I'd go back by him in turn three. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was crazy. We had a good time racing. All right, Sean going to lead him around. Dustin Lee starting on the outside. William Kirk third. Robert Craze fourth. Timothy Lewis fifth. Matthew Breckel starting in the sixth spot. So... 
Well, let's see how they manage going into turn one this time. Pace cards off and green, green, green. Here we go. William Kirk pretty much given Sean a shove down the front stretch. Cars diving out to the low side, coming down the front stretch, trying to give each other lots of room. Some people may have not, uh, they might have missed a shift on that. Looked like maybe Timothy might have missed a shift on that. A couple people got by him. Oh, Jeremy into the wall. Oh, God, we got a bunch of them into the wall back there. Ah, we got a bunch of them into the wall. So let's go back and watch this as they restart. It looks like maybe Robert Craze got a little bit loose there and people were kind of diving around trying to miss him knowing that he was loose. Jeremy kind of checked up a little bit and bounced off the wall. Tried to keep it off of the other drivers and did a really good job of that. But when he tried, I think when he tried to pull it back up on, nope, no, we got some other people up in the front there getting together. So it looks like Aaron Davis maybe and Matthew Breckel. And that's stirring up a big hornet's nest up in the front. Yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't quite see it from that particular camera angle, but uh, yeah, it, it does look like there could have been something with Matthew Breckel. Uh, Davis seemed to have made it through. And taking Timothy Oops. Lewis with him. So, all right. Well, all right, these guys, oh, Timothy is really tore up. Wow, he tore up. Driving that thing sideways around the track. So the guy's not having a good day out here, and uh, I don't think they're too happy about the <laughs> a turn of events on this track. But Dustin Lee is our new leader now. Hey, Rudy, is there any way we can uh, go on board with whoever ended up on their lid there? Yeah, I'll have to do it the old-fashioned way because I can't do it any other way. Hold on. Um, let's see. Who do we want to go on board with? Uh, whoever flipped. I know there was a truck rolling down the straightaway there. find out who it is here. I'm thinking it might have been uh, Timothy Lewis, I think. So let's go to the, I, I know Jeremy, I'm doing this the old way, but we want to see what exactly happened. Um, I think it might have been the double zero of Robert Craze, possibly. I want to kind of see where Timothy got. Jeremy hit the wall, and so did Robert Craze. Matthew Breckel come down trying to miss Robert Craze and catches Timothy Lewis. And that's where the, the hornet's nest kind of started, right there. Haven't seen anybody go upside down yet, but... Robert Craze, oh, there's Robert Craze, okay. Robert Craze goes upside down. Wow. All right, there you have it. Everybody coming off a of pit road now. The, the interesting thing about Pocono, and I think the reason that we're seeing a lot of trouble here is on the straightaway, there's a lot of room to fan out, but once you get to turn one, things get a, a lot narrower. And you kind of have to try to condense three wide, sometimes even four wide, into that little space from uh, the, the extremely wide front straightaway at Pocono. Alright, so second caution already. Only 
had one lead change with uh, Sean Butler and Dustin Lee changing. So second caution. Let's see how many after, after seven laps. So. Back down pit road. Probably to top off his fuel. Brian Workman coming down on pit road also. One driver's been doing a great job weaving his way through uh, a lot of these incidents here. Aaron Davis, I'm not quite sure where he started, but I know that he started outside of the top ten, and he's up in the sixth spot right now. Yeah, he started so. in ninth, and it was showing fifth there. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah he started in ninth. So uh, let's look at Jeremy's truck here from the front view. Yeah. Why did it go on Big Greenwood? I didn't go to Big Greenwood. Wow, this thing really... There's Jeremy. A lot of damage on that thing, Jeremy. I'm sure he's listening. Wow. Obviously maybe wanting to save his reset you know, for later in the race. Maybe it's handling okay, but a lot of damage on that truck. We'll go to the far chase here and look at the back. Back looks fine. This guy's not liking this, uh, these uh, uh, cautions on, on this track because Oh, so it takes you forever to go around this doggone track. All right, so Dustin's led four laps now, and Sean's led five. So uh, those being the only two, the only two that will get the bonus points for leading laps so far. And. Oh, I'm sorry to cut you off there, Rudy. And as I said, uh, certainly looking forward to this caution was Christopher Perryman. He's up there, back on the lead lap. And I, uh, Steve Hurst, he was involved in the wreck there. And last time I saw it, he was being scored as two laps down. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes that ticker is not right up to date until they cross the line. Yeah, I, he hit the wall pretty hard, so he probably had to get a tow. He probably couldn't limp it back to the pits. But, you know, you can get the lap back here with with minimal uh, difficulty as, as long as there's cautions, because we do have the way buys. Right. And, and Steve, you know, his main goal is to go out here and have fun. And, and you know, I give him a lot of credit for the, you know, his progress and I racing has improved. Tenfold. I mean, he's really come a long ways in the last, uh, the last since last season. He's come a long way. All right. So Dustin leading him around, deciding to start on the outside, which uh, that's up to him. He is the the leader. Let's see how good that works out for him here as they come around turn three, getting ready to take the green flag. Pace car ducks off and green, green, green. Dustin still hanging on on that outside, but Sean right on his inside. And those two gonna go side by side into turn one. And it looks like Sean's gonna beat Dustin out of that top spot as he slides up in front of Dustin now. William Kirk. 
right on the inside of Dustin now, looking to take that second spot away from Dustin, possibly. Decides against it. Dustin down in behind him. And now going into turn two, Dustin trying to get a run on the inside of Sean. It's a little wiggly coming out of the turn. Can't quite get it done. William Kirk tucks up on the outside of Dustin now. Uh, in that black stripe from where the grip is. I think that's when you get older and tired on that. That's where you've got good grip up there, right in that black stripe. William Kirk looking to the inside again. Going into turn one, looking on the inside of Dustin Lee. But Dustin just staying high enough to stay in that good, good track position right there and uh, does maintain that second position. So good job by him. And we ain't talked about yet. Uh, Michael Norris running in the fourth spot. Very good race by him. And look who's coming right up on his back bumper. Thomas Brander, Brandner. I'll get that right. As you feared, Stewart, uh, he's going to be a voice to be reckoned with, and uh, there he is running in the fifth spot. Oh, yeah. I mean, he started 12th, and he's already up in fifth. And, uh, I think on the restart, he was in, I think, ninth. He, he was nowhere near fifth, that's for sure. And he, yeah. yeah. He started 12th. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. It was about ninth. Jeremy Patterson now, I believe that's Jeremy. Somebody coming down on Pet Road. Uh, let's see here. Jeremy Patterson coming down on pit road now. Just not having the speed out of that car is uh, really affecting him. As he stops pit road, does do a tire change, and uses that reset. And he's away. That's going to put him back right now. I'm showing him about the 13th spot as our leaders are now coming out of turn three to come down the front stretch. Jeremy going to be not far ahead of him. Yeah, I mean, this this certainly could be uh, a fight that could shake up the points. Sean Butler, Dustin Lee, and Jeremy Patterson within 11 points of each other. Uh, Sean Butler and Dustin Lee are up there, uh, up front. Looks like Dustin Lee is actually back to third now. Uh, but Jeremy's in danger of going a lap down. Thomas Brandner, he gets by uh, Michael Norris to slide into the fourth spot now. So, uh, good job by Thomas. Setting his sights on uh, Dustin Lee next. <laughs> Aaron Davis in the sixth position. Vic Greenwood now up to the seventh position, so Vic showing a little signs of some comeback after that entanglement there with uh, Jeremy Patterson, and he's on the comeback trail. Yeah, I was talking to Aaron Davis before the race, actually, and uh, I said, Aaron, do you think you have a chance at winning the race tonight? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he's certainly very happy running in the sixth spot right now. I would say I would be. I know that. Even if I was... 10 seconds behind him, <laughs> you know. He's only 3.3 seconds behind his leader, so really doing well. But uh, Vic Greenwood starting to close in on him a little bit. Way back here, uh, Chuck Scala. Robert Cray's getting by Chuck Scala. So Chuck Scala going back into the ninth position. Timothy Lewis now 10th. Brian Workman, oh, I'm sorry, Matthew Breckel does get passed by Brian Workman, so Brian Workman uh, cruising up into the 11th spot. Came back from 15th, now he's up to 11th, wow. Or 12th, I'm sorry, 12th. Going to be going into the 11th position. Uh, Kevin O'Brien back to 13th, and Jeremy Patterson in the 14th spot. Yeah, Kevin's usually uh, really solid at every track we go to, you know, uh, usually able to run, you know, pretty high up in the standings there. 
but uh, see, it seems he's struggling with the tricky triangle. Now, uh, William Kirk dive into the inside of Sean Butler to take over that lead. So William Kirk, our new leader. He just wants to lead one lap, I think. He's got a pretty fast truck though. Sean right on his bumper coming out of turn three. And William Kirk is gonna lead a lap. Good job, William. So Sean getting shuffled back to second now. Uh, Thomas Brandner in third as he got by Dustin Lee. And now Sean looking to the inside of William Kirk. These two really having a blast up here battle. As he dives it into turn two here and it looks like he's going to complete that pass and I think William's probably happy with it. At least he just got to lead one lap. And, you know, but he's not going to give up. <laughs> no doubt. true. And, and what's happened here is as they've been battling, they've allowed uh, Thomas Brandener to catch up and get in there and possibly get a pass on William Kirk for the second spot. Yes, sir. That's, that's, that's happening as we speak. They come down the front stretch side by side. Really trying to hang on to that second spot, slides it out in front of Brandner and goes into turn one with a run on the inside of Sean Butler to take over that top spot again. Wow, good racing going on by these guys. William Kirk continues to hang on on that inside. It's a good run coming down the the uh, I don't know what you call that, the back stretch, I guess. One of the back stretches, I suppose. And they go through the tunnel turn side by side. And I'm going to go into turn three. Still side by side. Thomas Brander saying, come on, guys. You hold me up. And he tries to make it three wide. Ooh, not a good turn to go three wide in. Okay, William Kirk back up to the lead as Thomas got a little bit loose coming off that turn. Now Michael Norris diving it down. Wow, where did he come from? Man, what a run he got coming off a of three. Michael Norris gonna taking a bid for second now. Yeah, I was going to say, Michael Norris in that uh, Mike's Hard Lemonade Chevrolet right there, he was hanging back there in fifth, and I think he had a little bit more. He was just trying to save his tires and, and, and plan his way through there. Oops. the wrong way. There he is. I like his graphics. <laughs> his overlay graphic there with the bottles of Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> so he battles side by side with Sean as Thomas Brander now gets out ahead of them in the second spot. And William Kirk continuing the lead out here. Wayne Kirk coming to the line will lead three laps. And he is pulling away. Yeah, in our front two uh, to start the race, Dustin Lee and Sean Butler are back in uh, fourth and fifth position now after that little shuffle right there. Yeah. And, but Sean does get a run on Michael Norris and does clear Michael Norris as they come out of turn one. For Sean Butler back up to the third spot. He might have just backed off a little bit to get them tires pulled off. After him and William Kirk were, were battling it out so hard. Yeah, the field, uh, as we think, it's strung out a little bit. But these top five or so drivers, they're hanging pretty well together at the moment. Making for some great racing that you don't usually see at Pocono, to be honest. Yeah. Aaron Davis still hanging on to sixth here, but Vic Greenwood... Definitely closing in on him. Now looks to the inside of Aaron Davis. Coming out of turn three. It looks like he's going to make that pass on Aaron Davis. So Vic Greenwood going into the sixth and Aaron Davis going back to seventh. So let's take a trip back a little bit further here. Back to Timothy Lewis now up to the eighth position. Brian Workman in the ninth. Chuck Scala, 10th. Robert Craze back to 11th. 
Matthew Breckel 12th, Kevin O'Brien 13th, and Jeremy Patterson still hanging on in 14th, still hanging on in the lead lap. Not by much, but he's still on the lead lap. Front five here. Uh, William Kirk pulled by wave just a little bit, but uh, now Thomas Brandner and Sean Butler are going to go side by side coming down the back stretch. Yeah, it looked to me like on the front stretch, uh, William Kirk kind of came down a little bit to see if he could break the draft in 24. I'm not quite sure how helpful that is actually in eye racing. Uh, from what I know, it actually slows you down a little bit, but. That's from what I know, and I don't know that much, so. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> and now Dustin Lee dives it in underneath Michael Norris going for the, let's see, that would be for the fourth position. So Dustin Lee clearing Michael Norris now for the fourth position. And Michael Norris going back to fifth. So it looks like they've kind of settled into uh, some good racing now. There's uh, Aaron Davis and Vic Greenwood battling it out coming down the front stretch. And Aaron Davis got a run on Vic as they go side by side into turn one. Aaron hits that treacherous bump right there in turn one. Man, that bump is bad. Has just maybe a nose ahead of Vic. Vic trying to come back. They go side by side down the back stretch. So pretty good battle going on by these two. Let's go back a little further here because uh, we've got Timothy Lewis and Brian Workman have been battling for quite some time now. Each running two different lines around this track. Chuck Scala, boy, Chuck Scala had a great day here. Robert Craze. Looks like he was taking a peek to pass uh, Chuck Scala, but uh, backed off coming into turn three. And Matthew Breckel riding in the 12th spot, 19 seconds behind our leader. But it looks like uh, he's having a pretty good day out there. Not bad. Matthew, I hear Matthew downshifting in the turns. Kevin O'Brien yeah. in the 13th spot. What was you going to say? I don't have any experience here in the trucks. As I said, I've, I've done a little bit of NR 2003 here at Pocono, but uh, in the trucks, like uh, in the practice race last night, Rudy, did you have to shift that much? Or? I didn't shift at all. A lot of guys don't. Uh, some guys do, and, uh, you know, it's kind of like their own preference. You know, when you downshift and come out of the turn, you're only in third for just a, like a second, and then you got to shift it back into fourth. Right, and I, I suppose that does take a little bit out of your straightaway speed. Well, and it's kind of a, it's kind of almost the same. To be honest with you, uh, I really didn't notice much of a difference in the lap speeds or lap times. So Aaron Davis and Nick Greenwood still battling out pretty hard here. It's like these two are having having a good time out here racing each other. Aaron gets a really good run. Ducks it back in behind though. Just gonna decide he's just gonna stay in that seventh place for right now. Thomas Brander now back to fifth. Ooh, what happened? We missed something. Sean Butler into second. Dustin Lee third. Michael Norris fourth. And Thomas Brander going back to fifth. Whoa. We missed something.
He must have slipped up or something and, and uh, it cost him a couple positions. Cam here on uh, Dustin Lee and watch him battling here with Sean Butler. Looking back on Michael Norris here in the fourth spot. These front five still hanging pretty close together. Certainly a lot of distinctive lines uh, back there in turn three. You know, you can see Norris kind of running the very bottom. You can see Dustin running that black strip you were talking about. And it looked, yeah. like, and it looked like Brandoner might have been running up towards the, the top groove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody driving preferences are you know, they're a lot different. It ain't going to be long. We're going to be coming up on halfway here already, Stuart. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we'll see anybody short bidding. I'm not too sure about the pit window. You might know a little bit uh, more about that than I do. But uh, pit stops could be coming up soon. I'd yeah. say anything past lap 35, we could very well see some pit stops. Yeah, because some of the leaders did not pit on them cautions. And uh, they've stayed out. So, yeah, I would say we're probably going to be seeing some green flag pit stops here before long. I'm with you on that one. Somebody does come on pit road back there, and I missed who the heck that was. That would be Thomas Brander coming on pit road. Yeah, some, he might have hit the wall or something and gotten some damage, and he wants to get that fixed. So uh, he's going to elect a short pit and get that reset, and that should gain him a little bit of time that he would have lost driving around in a possibly damaged truck. Yeah, and he and uh, Aaron Davis coming on pit road now, too. So we are starting to see some green flag pit stops as Thomas takes four tires and fuel. Aaron Davis in his pit stop looks like he takes four tires and fuel now these guys should be set for the end of the race they should not have to stop I don't think I, I may be wrong on that because uh, here it is lap 29 they may have to stop one more time so I may be wrong So everybody's starting to get spread duty, except for these front four. These front four still maintaining right around each other. And now Sean Butler looking on the inside of William Kirk to take that spot away from William as he slides it in turn two right up in front of him. Good clean pass, good clean racing by these guys up front here. Man. They've been battling so hard. Yeah, there certainly seems to be a lot of give and take, you know. And that's what it's all about, you know. You got to give and take. If you give, and you know, next time the guy may not, he may not give it back. If you don't give, you know. And Kirk looking back to the inside of Sean Butler again. They come down the front stretch. They coming into turn one. We're not sure who's going to come out of the turn one here, the Victor, as they're still side by side. Wow, look at this. This is still side by side coming down the back stretch. Sean just got about a half a car length on William. Sean's 
Sean definitely a little bit better in, in turn two there because he can hold that low line. So, man, these front four are really going at it. And, uh, you know, I believe they're going to try to do this on one pit stop. Because this time by, uh, well, ooh, Dustin Lee getting really loose on him. Coming out of three. And Michael Norris looked like he was going to try to go by Dustin Lee, but he manages to stay back behind him. Yeah, it looked to me like Dustin might have tagged the wall there. Yeah, it looked pretty bad. <laughs> he was his, the back end of his truck was all over the place. But the good news is Dustin still probably has his reset, and he's coming up on his pit window anyway. So this shouldn't hurt him too bad. Right. No, what I've been seeing is the front four, they seem to get stretched out a little bit. And then they start racing each other, and then they get condensed back up again. And it's just a cycle. There's William Kirk and Dustin Lee, or William Kirk and uh, Sean Butler just battle lap after lap for the top spot here. Man, I'm telling you. Those two really having a good time out there. And now we are halfway. Just a hair past halfway. Good job by these guys. So now I think we're going to probably start seeing these these leaders think about pitting. I'm sure some of the other guys have pitted back there, but uh, these front four still have not pitted. To battle it out. Let's go back here. Vic Greenwood riding all by himself in the fifth position, about 12 seconds back of these guys. So uh, Vic picked up a lot of spots after getting tangled up there, him and Jeremy. Uh, Brian Workman in the sixth spot. Timothy Lewis running in the seventh spot. Timothy having a great day out there. Chuck Scala in the eighth. Oh, I bet you just jumping up and down in his chair. Robert Craze, ninth. Matthew Breckel in the 10th spot. Uh, Kevin O'Brien in 10th. Thomas Brinkman, they're now in 12th. I think they got jumbled up there a little bit. Yeah, there was a pass there and I missed it. Matthew Breckel got past uh, Thomas Brander to move him back to 12th for Thomas. Not having a great day out here. He's a little bit loose coming off. Robert Craze now down on pit road. Let's see what he has in store for his truck today. Well, I didn't do that. As he stopped in his pit stall. And not really that. Right side's going on. Left side's going on, full tank of fuel. And either way. All right, so seeing a few guys starting to take some green flag pit stops here. There's now William Kirk out and lead Dustin Lee in second. A little change in the lead up here. And Stuart, where is William Kirk running in the point right now? Uh, at the moment, William Kirk is, uh, he's 10th in the points, just uh, just behind Aaron Davis, and just ahead of uh, Jared Ackie. Mm -hmm. uh, Kirk is pretty well out of contention for the championship. He's 120 points back, but uh, his closest competition uh, being the ninth uh, place in points, Aaron Davis. Um... He's only about 16 points away from Aaron Davis, so it's possible that we could see a shakeup in the points. It's going to be a great points day either way mm -hmm. for for Kirk. Well, Sean has led 14 laps. Dustin Lee has led five. And William Kirk has now led 16 laps. So William Kirk's led the most laps right now. Two 
yeah. Washington, seven lead changes. Wow. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Seven lead changes amongst three drivers. That's pretty good. I think out of all the leaders, though, that uh, the number nine Miller Lite Chevy has been able to actually pull away, kind of, and and uh, actually maintain a large lead, whereas sometimes when Sean and Dustin take the lead, they, they lead for a lap or so and then drop back. Well, Michael Norris now down on, down on pit road, uh, relinquishing that fourth place and uh, comes to a stop in his pit stall. Right side's going on. Left side's going on. And he's away. Wow, what a pit stop. 11.4 seconds. Whew. That was a fast that, pit stop. It's that Mike's Hard Lemonade they're drinking. I guess so. Those guys are wired up, ain't they? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back up here to our leaders to see if uh, when they're going to be pitting. And here comes William Kirk. All three of our leaders coming down on pit road. Wow. Oh, and William Kirk overshoots his pits and has to back up. Oh, that's going to be costly. Oh, man, that's going to be costly. But it looks like they may come all come out of pit together. Dustin Lee getting out first, though. Sean Butler second, and William Kirk coming out third. Uh, Dustin Lee had a 10.9 second pit stop. Wow. Sean Butler had a 9.1 second pit stop. I think, did they take four? Yeah. Whew. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. It just re-registered. 14.5. I was, I was going to say, I didn't think 9.1 would be possible, but... But Dustin Lee had a 13.5 second pit stop. And William Kirk, that cost him big time. His was 16 and a half second pit stop. So definitely costly to him. So, he did uh, a nice job recovering, it for, recovering from it, though. And I'm sorry oh to yeah. cut you off there, Rudy. But, you know, the moment he realized he overshot it, I saw him back up. Vic Greenwood out on point now. Brian Wordman way back uh, 4.9 seconds behind the leader, Vic Greenwood. So Vic trying to stay out here and lead a lap, maybe to try to get one of them points back, you know. I think he, well, he got tangled up in that. I'm not sure how many incidents he got. You get four incidents, you lose a point. So I don't know how many incidents he got on that tangle there with Jeremy early on in the race, but... Uh, Whatever it was, if he lost a point, he just got it back <laughs> for leading the lap. Oh, yeah, and uh, Vic certainly, the point would come very useful to him. He's currently 13th in points, and uh, he's only two points ahead of Chuck Scala, who's 14th in the points at the moment. And these guys still have not pitted. Brian Workman has not pitted, but Brian, one of the guys, he's, you know, stopped late just before they were getting ready to go green you know the, on their last lap and stopped and topped off his tank so uh, he may have enough here to go an extra lap or two maybe to try to get that point for leading a lap Dustin Lee in third Sean Butler fourth William Kirk fifth Michael Norris sixth uh, Thomas Brandner in seventh Kevin O'Brien in eighth Jeremy Patterson now up to the ninth position, so good comeback by Jeremy. But I think he's going to have to stop one more time. He's still got 25 laps to go. Matthew Breckel 10th, Aaron Davis 11th, Timothy Lewis 12th, Robert Craze 13th, Chuck Scala 14th, uh, Steve Hurst 15th. Back up to our leader, Vic Greenwood, as he brings it around. Still has not pitted. I gotta get my wheel 
set up. I forgot all about that. That's where I got my push to talk button for in the race and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. I do got to make sure I think I got a... No, it's it's all right. I know it's on drivers. All right. Yeah, so I'm sure. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sure no one wants a caution right now more than uh, than Jeremy Patterson because he, yeah. he's definitely going to need it after uh, the, the beginning of the race not quite going his way. Uh, other than that, though, yeah, everyone's relatively close uh, on the track. You know, things are strung out, but uh, the green flag pit stops are certainly shaking things up. Yeah. Definitely. And again, you know, our leaders have not pitted yet. Uh, Vic Greenwood and Brian Workman have not pitted yet. And uh, not sure, you know, they, they have enough fuel, but I'm not really sure if they have enough to uh, go very many more laps. And I know Brian's probably trying to stay out there to lead a lap, hoping Vic's going to pit. And I believe Brian does have the fuel to at least run a lap or two more than Vic. Vic looked like he was going to come down pit road that time, but nope, false alarm. And Brian Workman not pitting either. So we've got a Somebody just come off a of pit road. Looked like uh, Kevin O'Brien just come off a of pit road. Yes, he did. I'm gonna get back up here to Vic because I want to. I want to see when these guys are gonna pit. How's the broadcast look? Pretty good. Oh yeah, it looks good. Not choppy. Pretty smooth. Not grainy or nothing. Uh, no, no, I mean, it certainly doesn't look like a YouTube video, but for a stream, it looks great. Uh, it's a little bit choppy, but I think that's more on my end. Uh, could be. Not sure. Probably if you were watching it on the website, it would be better than watching it on Twitch. You know that? Yeah, I just got it on Twitch right now. Yeah. The website has, uh, you know, because you got more bandwidth on the website than you do in Twitch. They don't give exactly. you much. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. Oh, and caution is out. So let's go find Wow. Out. Oh, this Thomas changes Brand everything. Thomas Brandner sliding. Whoa, did he ever get loose there? Let's go back and watch this in instant replay. Brings it around two, and it looks like when he comes around turn three is when he gets loose. So I'm going to slow this down. Watch him as he goes into turn three here. I know I slowed it down a bit early, but <laughs> I want to see exactly where he's going to get loose. Yeah, this is going to change everything. Because uh, a lot of the yeah, guys... Great, Jim. Sorry. Yeah, a lot of the guys are going to get the pit now. Yeah, brilliant job keeping that truck off the wall. Yeah, he did. He gets loose coming around three right here. And just spins it right around. Just lose, totally loses it right there. I'm sure he's probably just tickled to death that he's uh, didn't hit the wall. Oh. oh yeah, he's still got time to come back. You know, we saw his his run there from ninth up to up to I think almost the lead. He was running second there for a while. So mm -hmm. let's get up here to our leaders. Uh, Vic Greenwood still being our leader. I'm sure we're going to see him come down pit road. Brian Workman's probably going to come down. Ryan might stay out though. He might want to lead one lap. I, I look for him to do that. I'm not sure. Tires are pretty important here. I could see most of the field coming down. I could even see uh, Dustin 
William Kirk and uh, Sean coming down pit lane too, even though they they just pitted a couple laps ago. Yeah, you could be right. So this could work in Vic's favor because Vic could come out with the lead here and four tires and full on fuel. Yeah, him and Brian both coming down pit road, so definitely them two needed it. And a lot of the other guys staying out. Dustin Lee and all them staying out. Oh, no, Dustin did come down. Oh, yeah, everybody come down. Okay, never mind. I take that back. Wow, what was I thinking? I didn't see them until right at the last second there. And those guys who stayed out, and Wortman and Vic Greenwood, this is gonna just great for them because they're going to come out with track position and floor tires and fuel. So Michael Norris is uh, going to be our new leader now. Michael Norris staying out. I uh, believe that's what I'm showing, that he's our leader. Yeah, because I, yeah, Michael Norris is our leader. He's got to cross the line because he didn't cross the line in time there, but we've got a few lap down vehicles up ahead of him there. Uh, Chuck Scala is at the tail end of the lead lap. Robert Craze, Kevin O'Brien, and Steve Hurst one lap down, which Steve should get his lap back. coming down pit road uh, that's going to give up his chance for a wave by I hope he knew that across the line with 19 to go and yes Michael Norris is our leader Michael I'm Stan. sure he's hope. Sorry, Rudy. <laughs> nah, it's all right. I'm sure he's hoping for a quick caution on the restart here, uh, because I'm not quite sure how no tires is going to work. Yeah, because it was quite a few laps ago that he did a pit stop, so uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe he messed up or made a mistake or something there that maybe he meant to pit but didn't. And I don't know. I don't know what what his strategy are. been a pretty good race this is only the third caution I mean that that's actually quite impressive for uh, you know running 65 laps here a long race yeah we got uh, Michael Norris and gonna be starting first uh, Sean Butler second Vic Greenwood third, Brian Wortman fourth, Dustin Lee fifth, William Kirk sixth, Aaron Davis seventh, Thomas Brandner eighth, Jeremy Patterson ninth, Matthew Breckel tenth, Timothy Lewis eleventh, Robert Craze twelfth, Kevin O'Brien thirteenth, Chuck Scala fourteenth, and Steve Hurst fifteenth. They, they will be restarting here. And I'm still showing um, uh, Steve Hurst one lap down. 
He pitted there and he probably shouldn't have. He would have got one of me. He would have got the wave by and got his lap back. But the lights are off on the pace car now and we're be going green next time by. Yeah, either Sean Butler had a great pit stop, or he might have taken two tires because he got both. He got past both Vic Greenwood and Brian Wortman on pit road there. I thought I'd seen him take four tires. I mean, he had a uh, he had a 13 and a half second pit stop. So. You know, Vic Greenwood's pitted five times. Brian Wortman's pitted six times. Sean Butler has pitted twice. Michael Norris has pitted once. So I think Michael Norris might be out there trying to say it, stay out there on fuel. But I think I'm afraid he's going to get eat up by these new tires. Yeah, it's always scary when you see a car up front with uh, with older tires. That can sometimes work out good and sometimes not so good. Right. Everybody behind him's got new tires. Right, and with 18 laps to go, everyone's thinking this is going to be the last restart. They're trying to get all they can get. It's going to be real interesting to uh, see him fan out here on the front stretch. Alright, pace car ducks off and green, green, green. Here we go. Hopefully that was our last restart. Sean goes side by side right down the front stretch here. Side by side with Michael Norris going into turn one. Looked like Sean may be able to get by him as he slides it around turn one. Vic Greenwood now on the inside of Michael Norris with them new tires. The guy's slipping and sliding a little bit till they get a little heat build up in them, but. Michael Norris hanging right on the back bumper of Sean Butler, though. Dustin Lee in the fourth spot. Oh, I would. Okay. How'd I do that? <laughs> okay, Brian Workman fell all the way back. Okay. Dustin Lee and William Kirk coming down the front stretch. Nose to tail. William Kirk just pushing the daylights out of that that pink uh, breast cancer awareness month car of Dustin Lee. Wow. And they get a heck of a run uh, on Vic Greenwood. Dustin Lee going to come out out of turn one. It looks like he may have a little bit of uh, an advantage over Vic Greenwood. Thomas Brandon diving to the outside. Trying to look like he's going to take it three wide, but Michael Norris coming down on that inside. He's hanging out there pretty good, though. Sean Butler now starting to pull away by quite a little bit. It's about almost nine tenths of a second uh, ahead of Michael Norris. Now. I'm sure Michael Norris is very happy about what he's seen in his rear view right now. A bunch of trucks battling, helping him uh, stay out there in second place on those older tires. Definitely. Thomas Brander now up to the fourth position and coming. Uh, Vic Greenwood sliding back quite a ways as William Kirk gets a run on Vic on the outside and clears Vic Greenwood. Vic slides it up in be behind him. Jeremy Patterson looking on the inside of Brian Workman going into turn two. And does complete the pass on Brian Workman. Now Timothy Lewis looking on the inside of Brian Workman. And it looks like Timothy is going to complete that pass on Brian Workman going backwards quite a bit. So they go three wide around turn three almost. Oh. Aaron Davis almost getting into the side of Brian Workman. And Brian Workman gets a run and gets back by Timothy Lewis coming down the front stretch.
Thomas Brandner looking to the inside of William Kirk coming out of one. Can't quite get her done though. Dustin Lee up into the second spot. William Kirk gets a run and goes by Michael Norris on the inside. And Thomas Brandner following suit. Slides it up in front of Michael Norris. Looks like Michael Norris had to pull the old parachute to keep from hitting him. Oh, and Brandner gets all out of shape on that one. But maintains the position. I don't know how he did that. <laughs> That's impressive right there. Yeah, that was some fancy driving there, Thomas. Oop, I went the wrong way, dog. I'm going to go back here. Looks like uh, Jeremy Patterson now on the inside of Vic Greenwood. And that's for the sixth place. They still side by side. Jeremy getting a little bit of a run coming out of the turn, but can't quite slide it up in front of Vic. Vic has a good run on that outside line. They come down the back stretch side by side. Jeremy wiggled just a little bit in that turn, and that was just enough for Vic to get a good run on him. Now Jeremy does clear him in turn two. Good job, Jeremy. Yeah, great rebound for the 38 trucker Jeremy Patterson, you know. Having a rough, rough night for most of the night, but here we are with about 10 to go, and he's about to crack the top five, so it's a good rebound. Yeah. Him and Vic still battling back here a little bit. Vic kind of sticking that nose out like he wants to get a run on Jeremy, but uh, he can't quite get it, uh, get enough oomph to get up there and get to him. Everybody else here knows the tail. Thomas Brander in the fourth position. Wayne Kirk third. Dustin Lee in sixth or second. And uh, Sean Butler now pulling away. Holy smokes, look at him pulling away. Now he's out to a little over a second ahead of Dustin Lee. Dustin Lee and uh, Wayne Kirk could get nose to tail. They might be able to draft down the front stretch and kind of close up on him a little bit. Really racing good here. 11 laps to go out of the 65 lapper here today. We've still got 14 trucks on the lead lap and only one lap down, uh, Steve Hurst. Yeah, the, the previous lap Dustin was one second back on Sean, and he's closed the gap now to uh, about eight tenths of a second right there. So oh, Dustin is closing on Sean Butler. Ooh, Brian Workman getting loose. Let's go back and see what happened to Brian here. I said that ain't I said Brian Wortman. So we'll just stop the broadcast. <laughs> here we go. Okay, going into turn one here pretty hard. And it looks like he's just gonna start turning around. He does. He slides it right around. And going to take a ride out across the grass and mow the grass for us. Oh, it was nice of you, Brian. That's almost reminiscent of uh, Elliot Sadler's crash at Pocono where he uh, hit the Armco really, really hard. Mm hmm Yeah, he's going to, boy, he's going to hit that a ton. Oh, that's right about where I hit uh, yesterday, only I stuck right in the wall, right in the fence. So Brian's on pit road now. And uh, I'm sure he's trying to get some of that damage fixed. Yeah, it looks to me like he got a tow, and that probably blew his motor. So, Brian Wortman might be done for the day. Not sure if he has a reset or not. Weird. 
acting weird. Well, we thought the last few restarts were exciting. This one with uh, about probably eight to go by the time we uh, take the green flag. Everyone's going to be getting all they can get in turn one. Look at everybody coming down on pit road. Bunch of them coming down on pit road. Yeah, Dustin Lee, he, he was acting like he was going to go down pit road and pulled Sean. Sean went down and Dustin turned back up there. And Dustin's going to stay out, it looks like. Oh, and Jeremy overshoots his pits and had to back back up. William Kirk is away. Sean Butler's away. Timothy Lewis is away. Okay, when they get everything all sorted out here, we'll find out who our leader is. I believe it's Dustin Lee. Yeah, it looked to me like uh, William Kirk might have taken two tires there. I think that might have been a good call by Dustin, though, because we saw how important track position was with everyone battling behind Sean there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Looks like Brandoner stayed out as well. Yep, yeah. and Michael Norris. Clear back there because they haven't. Yeah, Michael Norris uh, in the third spot. Vic Greenwood in fourth. Matthew Breckel uh, actually is in the fifth place that hasn't updated yet. Uh, Chuck Scala sixth. So Chuck, we're, <laughs> he's going to have a good finisher when he gets all done. Once they get all across the line here and get sorted out, then we'll be able to run back through the field a little bit better. The light should go off on the pace car this time by. No, not yet, so still another lap. Looks like we're going to maybe have about six. Six to go when they get the green flag, maybe. Chuck Scala stayed out as well. He's currently running the sixth spot. Yeah. William Kirk, seven. Sean Great. Butler. Oh, sorry about that. Sean Butler taking four tires, though. He's all the way back in the ninth spot. Yeah. But, you know, as fast as he is out there, that might have been a good call. Uh, with a six-lap shootout, he can pretty much put it right into the turns pretty good. We'll have to see how this is all going to shake out. This is going to be a heck of a finish uh, as long as we don't get a caution. You jinxed it, Rudy. Yep, probably did. <laughs> <laughs> Doggone it. Light should go off this time, pace car. And they do. So everybody should start doubling up. Dustin Lee decided they're going to start on the inside this time. Maybe that would be a good call because uh, 
it always seems like going into turn one you always want to be on that low side uh, even though you got good bite coming off on the high side uh, you want to at least go into turn one on the low side yeah I mean you can get good bite coming off of one once you're up to speed but uh, once you're you when know, you're just getting up to speed on a restart the bottom line is probably going to be faster mm -hmm. So we're going to get the green flag at six laps to go here to finish a 65 lapper. Going to be a good finish. Wow. Did you see, I didn't see what the heck that was all about? It, it looked to me like Brandoner kind of came down into Michael Norris and Steve Hurst got a little bit of that as uh, Brandoner was coming around. Well, let's go back wow. and look at that. Let's see what happened here. He was doing that cleaning the tire stuff off, and and then he lost it. He come right down into Michael Norris. Wow. So caution right back out again. And these guys come down Pay Road. I don't know if they got anything, uh, any resets left. I really don't know what to say about that one. Yeah, I don't know why he was cleaning the tires off don't work, you know. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's not a great way to have your league debut, but you know, we know we know that he's able to drive. He did a great job in the Nationwide Series race. Uh, it's just I don't know. Lights are off on the pace car, so it looks like we're going to be going green this time by. And those guys are going to be in the pits. If Dustin Lee brings them around. Rick Greenwood on the outside. Matthew Breckel in third now. Chuck Scala fourth. William Kirk fifth. Timothy Lewis sixth. This is going to be a heck of a restart. Going to have five laps to go when they cross the line. of a jump there, Matthew Breckel now on the inside of of uh, Vic Greenwood and caution out again, what the heck why is caution out again what, what the heck's going on yeah, I, I'm not quite sure there it's possible that we had a truck uh, coming around trying to catch the field and maybe got loose I I know that I saw a truck coming out of pit lane right there as the trucks were getting started. I didn't see anything in the main field wreck. Huh. 
I don't know. I don't know what happened. Yeah, what truck is that coming out of the pits on the apron there? Um, Michael Norris, but... Yeah, that shouldn't have brought out the caution. No, he was just coming out of pit road. And he come out behind them, didn't he, or... The, ol the only thing I would try is put the camera on the uh, focus on crashes mode and just play the restart again. I, I don't know. Well, hmm. I don't know if it'll... Some crashes, but See anything? And they slowed right back down, so it had to have happened behind them. Huh? I don't. I don't get it. Hell, the race will be over by the time I figure out where it's at. Yeah, it looks like uh, I think we're gonna have a one-lap shootout here, Rudy. Or uh, it might actually be over there. I'm not sure. I certainly hope we can get a green flag lap in. I wonder if it come out because of Michael Norris coming off a of pit road. No, oh, it might have. You know, because he shouldn't. Have, he shouldn't have come out. <coughs> <coughs> I'll bet you. Yeah, have pit road out. might have actually been closed. Yep. And it looks like he realized that the field was coming, and he stopped there. Yeah. Dustin Lee's still up front here. Well, hopefully we got that figured out, but yeah, it's going to be about a one-lap shootout. Wow. Well, that's what caution number four. These past few laps have certainly uh, worked out really well for Dustin Lee. Five. Staying out, and uh, yeah. yeah, now he's got the lead right there with, uh, looks like he's going to have one lap. And if he gets a jump like he did on that last restart, I don't see any way anyone's going to catch him. Yeah. Tough break, though, for Sean Butler. Uh, I don't see him getting through, I think, nine trucks in one lap. He could maybe get a top five out of it, but even that is stretching it. Yeah, and he'll, he's got the top, uh, led the most laps, clinched. So The only one close to him is William Kirk with 18. He's three laps behind him. And uh, Dustin Lee's only led 12, so that's, um, you know, nobody can catch Sean for the most laps led, so he'll get that bonus point. I think if there's a truck that could get Dustin here, I'd be watching the, uh, the nine truck of William Kirk. I think he's on two tires. I think he was the first one off of pit road there on two tires. Uh, and he's had speed all night. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, Dustin's pretty... Pretty fast out here. He's uh, definitely one to watch. So Vic Greenwood starting in second. Matthew Breckel, man, good. This could be a good finish for Matthew. Uh, William Kirk fourth. Chuck Scala in fifth. Great finish for him. Sean Butler sixth. Jeremy Patterson in seventh. Timothy Lewis eighth. Aaron Davis ninth. Kevin O'Brien in the 10th spot. Robert Cray's 11th. Steve Hurst 12th. And Brian Workman 13th. One lap down. Actually, Rudy, I think uh, the race is over. Uh, we got two laps to green, and they're not doubled up yet. Ah. Well, that could be then. Dustin Lee going to cruise to an easy finish. Yeah, you're right. Race will be over. 
Hmm. All right. Coming to the white flag. Well, let's see if we can get down here and get a word in with uh, our leader. All the, all the guys that I was thinking very should your podium. Chucky. I was telling you that I thought you were going to be one to be competitive for wins here very shortly. So, good job. I was rising. I was going for it. I, I mean, I, I, I was real, kind of a little cautious of you there, but... I wasn't letting up, man. I was going for it. <laughs> okay, I just want to uh, say one more thing again, guys. Um, I'm pretty sure Rudy, Rudy will be uh, activating his voice chat in, in a minute. So, uh, absolutely no selling and whatnot. And Sean, uh, I'll be saving the replay. So, looks like I'll be uh, having a couple good decent hours here going through all, all these incidents throughout the whole race. Yeah, I was just wondering what brought it out, because no one seems to know. I couldn't find anything either, guys. Uh, the only thing I could find was Michael Norris coming off a of pit road, which maybe because his pit was might have been closed and he come off, it might have brought the caution out. I'm not sure, though, because I couldn't find anything else. Well, like I said, Rudy, I'll be um, looking at the whole replay of the race um, in a couple of hours. Oh, up, Jones. Um, I'll, I'll go uh, go ahead and read uh, where the interview he is now. The top three. Congratulations to the podium. Five lap hosted session at Pocono to decide the winner. That's it. I'm done. All right, Dustin Lee. This is Rudy Cummings in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, man. Well, might not be the way you like to win it under caution like this, but. Good pit strategy, staying out there, and uh, you led quite a few laps, and great run today. Tell us a little bit about it, how everything went for you today. Well, uh, it was great racing with, you know, William and Sean earlier, and, yeah, I thought it was going to come down to us three there uh, towards the end. But, you know, we got all these cautions and everything else, but, you know, yeah, I played the strategy game a little bit there, and, uh, yeah, I was really worried uh, with, you know, six laps to go there because I knew they had time to get to me, and, you know, I wanted to try to hold them off. Yeah. But thankfully, yeah, you know, I like winning that way, but caution came out, and I'll take it any way I can get it. That's right, brother. It all looks good on paper. Hey, make sure you guys don't hit each other, man. That's you're getting incident points. Sorry about that. I locked it up. Sorry, sorry, Dustin. Sorry. I'll blow you a kiss. Sorry. All right. Uh, but great racing out there today, Dustin. I, I mean, you ran a really, really awesome race. And uh, But congratulations coming home top spot today, buddy. A great, great job. Yeah, that, that kind of just ruined it right there. All the points I did gain uh, in the championship, it's, it's gone now. Vic Greenwood, this is Rudy Cummings in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you here, uh, Rudy. Great race out there today, Vic. Uh, coming home in the second spot. You had a little tangle there with Jeremy Patterson earlier on, but uh, you wound up bringing home second. Uh, tell us a little bit about your strategies, because you had some different strategies than I've seen a lot of the other guys have. Or maybe you don't want to tell us. Well, uh, Rudy, uh, sometimes you get lucky. That's what happened here tonight. Um, we wanted to lead a lap. We stayed out, and uh, I guess the, <laughs> the rest went our way. So, Well, all in all, it turned out good for you, and uh, congratulations on your second spot. Uh, you want to give a shout-out to anybody? Well, I'd like to give a shout-out uh, to you and Ed and Maximum Speed Racing uh, for all you do for us uh, to put this on. All right, Vic. Thanks a lot, buddy. Congratulations again. Matthew Breckel, this is Rudy Cummings in the booth. You got a copy? I got a copy, Rudy. Wow, Matthew. Great to see you on the podium today. Great job coming home third spot. Tell us a little bit about your racing out there today. Well, uh, it really was a lot of the circumstances. I probably was about a 10th to 12th place car. 
overall, but uh, cautions just came, the, came my way, especially the one on like lap 44, I was down to like two laps of fuel left when it came out, so that was good. Well, we've seen uh, quite a few of the guys uh, playing the fuel strategy game out there, but with the cautions that come out like they did, it kind of it just kind of threw that all out the window. But uh, great run out there today, Matthew. Way to bring it home, third spot today. And you want to give a shout out to anybody? Yeah, I just want to uh, say thanks to Jeremy Patterson for uh, turning me on to uh, this uh, league. It's a great league, and a bunch of guys that race clean and uh, uh, respectful, and uh, it's a really good place to race. Wow. Yeah, we wound up having a, a few extra cautions here today. That didn't help us any, six cautions, but uh, we did have 11 lead changes. We had great racing, a lot of green flag racing. And, uh, yeah, I, I got to give the guys a, a thumbs up for the, the job they did out there today. A lot of guys don't like this track, and they struggle here. And uh, for us to have the race that we did today, I think it, for the most part, turned out pretty decent. So, but again, congratulations there, Matthew, on your third, third spot. Good job. Thank you. All right. So, uh, all right, let's do a rundown here real quick, and we'll close this broadcast out. And Dustin Lee brings it home in the top spot as he's doing his victory burnout. Uh, Vic Greenwood second, Matthew Breckel third. William Kirk, 4th, Chuck Scala, 5th, Sean Butler, 6th, Jeremy Patterson, 7th, Timothy Lewis, 8th, Aaron Davis, 9th, Kevin O'Brien, 10th, Robert Craze, 11th, 11th, Steve Hurst, 12th, Brian Workman, 13th, Michael Norris, 14th, Thomas Brandner, and 15th, and Christopher Perryman, 16th, rounding out the field. So, uh, pretty good race all in all. Yeah, I mean, it was exciting. It was exciting not because of uh, the racing. It's just the strategy. And a lot of guys who are usually, uh, you know, not up front got really good finishes today. Yes, they did. You know, and uh, I will have to say for, like I said earlier there, you know, for it being a uh, track that a lot of the guys really didn't like. Some really struggled on it and not being one of their favorites. And, uh, you know, Actually, it wasn't a bad race. You know, we had quite a few cars on the lead lap, so great race by everybody out there today. Uh, and hope, hopefully, they're going to take some of what they learned today and use it next week at Watkins Glen. We got to run 30 laps at Watkins Glen next week, so uh, hopefully, uh, they took a little bit of what they learned today and and try to you know make sure that they take them turns a little slower and and use that throttle and use that brake and. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up. And, Stuart, I want to thank you very much for helping me in the booth today. I appreciate that so very much. Uh, good having you in here with me. Yeah, thank you very much for having me up here, Rudy. It's a, it's a new experience for me. I haven't been up here before, but uh, I'm also ready to get back to racing at Watkins Glen. That's going to be really fun. Oh, yeah. Well, it'll be much better when you have the track and, you know, you'll be able to actually watch it live and be able to talk about a lot more things because, you know, you're only being able to talk about what I'm talking, what I'm seeing, you know, so. Oh, yeah. You know, so, but, okay, well, thanks a lot, and uh, we will see you all next week at Watkins Glen.